really flowery and beautiful prose that you have in the book they said that and they were like we don't need this this is like freaking threw it in the trash and hello my name is Angelina and welcome to my channel today i literally spent the entirety of my morning reading persuasion so i have a lot of thoughts in my head and i want to unload them in this video so let's do this i'm in so much pain like i literally got my wires for my braces yesterday they hurt you know what let's distract myself let's talk about what i love to talk about let's talk about books pretty recently Netflix did an adaptation for Jane Austen's Persuasion and I watched it last week and I decided let's read the novel because it had so many mixed reviews from people, especially people that have read the books. So a lot of people were just plain out pissed. So, you know what? I want in on that bandwagon. Like, why are you guys pissed? I mean, the movie was I. I'll just say it was okay. It was not like too bad but then again it wasn't like great either but you know what i read the book today and i kind of get why people are so so mad <laughs> for people who don't know persuasion is it was one of the last books written by jane austen it's about a second chance romance our main character in the book her name is anne elliot she used to be engaged to this man called um frederick wetworth wentworth I keep calling him Wentworth and I, I like keep realizing that it's not Wentworth, it's Wentworth. His name is um, Frederick Wentworth. Uh, his name is Frederick Wentworth. Him and Anne used to be engaged about seven years ago. They meet again and it's really about them reconnecting and a lot of like pining. The Netflix adaptation doesn't really capture that. They really wanted to make it front-footed, feminist, and they added a lot of things that were just unnecessary. And one of the things they absolutely butchered was really flowery and beautiful prose that you have in the book. They said that and they were like, we don't need this. This is like a freaking threw it in the trash. These books by Jane Austen, they have some really wonderful text. Just, I feel like they should be on the screen more often. Like, why would you not put that on a screen? People love that. And it just makes you feel some type of way. At least not in my experience. Guys don't come up to me and say things like, I'm half hope, half agony. I mean, they had that in the movie, but they threw out a lot of things. One instance, Dakota Johnson was like, we're exes. I'm like, What? Why is she saying that? Why? There were, there were so many things that I didn't get about this movie, but I the, some of the positives with some of the characters. I would say Henry Golding did an amazing job. I think his portrayal of Sir Elliot was really good. Could have been Frederick. I know a lot of people have said that and I was like, um... Let's just, you know, let's just see how the leads turn out. And honestly, they had non-existent chemistry. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, but you guys just didn't have chemistry. I know chemistry, trust me. I've seen season two of Bridgerton. I know what good chemistry looks like. I'm gonna take Kate and Anthony as like my template for chemistry. The prototype. If you don't compare to that, or even like go close to that, you guys don't have chemistry, I'm sorry. I do have to say that costumes in the movie, they were pretty great. I really like the color palette. I love a good color palette. The pastels and metallic colors here and there. I remember Dakota rocking some metallic eyeshadow at some point. One thing they didn't do is that they didn't make the colors distinct to a character. That's something that really helps in my head place character. Bridgerton, they do that for the Featheringtons. They have like all kinds of citrusy colors and then you have the Bridgertons with the pastels. I would have loved if they incorporated that in here. And also Anne is supposed to be more of a wallflower. Like people don't really give her a whole lot of attention. She's not supposed to be so fun-footed. Well, I did not 
particularly enjoy her interpretation of Anne Elliot. And the breaking of the fourth wall was becoming really frustrating at times for me, especially at the end when she was reading the letter. I'd love for her to be in the moment. Like, I know in Fleabag, every time when she was like super engaged with the priest, she would stop interacting with the audience. But it was weird that in this movie, they decided that when she would be reading that letter, you know, she would you would expect her to be in the moment and really absorb that letter and kind of forget about the audience but breaking of the fourth wall was the most prominent in that scene and that just did, doesn't make sense to me why would you do that why would you do that why would you do that why would you want to share that with the audience you should kind of forget about the audience and all you would think about is frederick Mr. Wentworth. Wentworth. <laughs> Wentworth. 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 Another character that I absolutely love was Mary. She was so over the top. Like, I was like giggling the whole time. But then again, the genre of this film shouldn't have been comedy. I, because I read the book today and it was pretty somber. Like, sure, there were little moments of hilarity, like, sprinkled in there. Because of Mary, like, I literally interpreted Mary's lines in the book as funny because I saw the movie. That kind of influenced my perception of Mary. But I have to say, her wine scene falling down Anne and just, I don't know, I didn't like it. Anne is, I feel like more on the introverted side. People don't pay attention to her. Like, she's a character that I relate to a lot because I'm introverted and it was like one of Jane Austen's heroines that I could relate to the most and I know introvertedness is usually looked down upon and I really hated the fact that they just kind of tossed this model and they were like oh she's too much of a wallflower she doesn't really do much so let's pack that up and completely change Anne Elliot. Why? Why? And there was a place where Anne was talking about poetry and she was bonding with Captain Benwick he was reminiscing his time with his now dead fiance and she was like giving him words of comfort. In that moment, those two had more chemistry than Anne had with Captain Wentworth. Dakota and Cosmo Jarvis, they're really talented actors, but they just couldn't bring that like pining and yearning into the scene. I didn't really feel it. I don't know about other people. It's still watchable. I don't think it, it was an absolutely terrible movie. There are worse movies out there for sure. I did read the book today and it was totally very different from the movie that we got. I know they were trying to make it more accessible and understandable for someone in 2022, but honestly, people are not that dumb. Like, if you use, like, a little bit of flowery language, maybe, like, don't make it super hard to understand. Kind of, like, break it down to a component that's more digestible by the audience. But don't, like, discredit the audience to not understanding anything. I know a lot of people get scared from trying Jane Austen because it's not... Um, it's not like it's not as complex as Shakespeare for sure like I'll read Shakespeare and it'll be in one ear and out the other because I don't understand shit but uh, with Jane Austen it's not that bad and especially if you can really direct it in a way that's more approachable for the audience but don't start throwing in words like if you're a 10 over here you're a 5 over there if this was a spoof i would understand but it's not a spoof it's an adaptation of the source material like you don't have to do stuff like that it is on netflix which is a streaming service that millions of people have hopefully they'll be encouraged to try it out try the movie i know regency is becoming a very prominent genre now thanks to Sanditon, thanks to Bridgerton. If it's encouraging someone to actually go and read Jane Austen, I think they have achieved something out of it. And it's encouraging people to try these pieces of text that are very timeless for a very good reason. 
and they're getting adopted so many times. I guess in that way, that's a really good thing. Also, another plus is that they had a diverse cast which was great could have definitely expanded a little bit more on lady russell she should have had a more prominent role it's not the worst thing out there i know a lot of people are very mad but it's it's not really the worst thing out there um was it great no what would i rate it out of 10 i would probably rate it a 5.5 like it, it had good colors i like art <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the saving graces um yeah other, it had diverse casting like i'm a brown girl i like to see more people of color in movies people who maybe look like me overall i think it's still kind of moving the needle to where we w want things to go yeah, it's pretty cool and i'm i'm glad that it it's out there for people to see and people are more exposed to jane austen's work and yeah that's that's gonna be all so thank you for watching Wentworth. 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 Wentworth.